Welcome back, everybody. IGN Live from Comic-Con, brought to you by Lucy and the Evil Within. I'm Damon Hadfield. Now, Marty Sleva here just got out of the Halo Nightfall panel. I did. And Brian yes. talked to a bunch of people. I did. just yeah. got out of the Halo <laughs> Nightfall panel. He did not talk to me, though. It was other people. So we're going to talk to you now. Yeah. <laughs> what is Halo Nightfall? So, yeah, Halo Nightfall is the, uh, it's sort of the digital four-part, five-part television series that's going to premiere with uh, the Master Chief Collection. So if you buy the Master this Chief November. Collection this November on Xbox One, you're going to get this TV show. And uh, so the panel was hosted by Jeff Keighley. They had folks from 343 there, the developers, uh, from Scott Free Productions, which is Ridley Scott's production company, and Ridley Scott's the, the executive producer on this mm -hmm. project. Uh, they had Mike Coulter, who's the star. Uh, Mike Coulter's on The Good Wife, which that, that touched my heart. But he's playing Agent Locke in uh, the series. And uh, so Agent Locke, everyone's like, well, who's this character? Uh, and sort of the big reveal from here is that Agent Locke, who's the main character of Nightfall, is, is the second playable character in Halo 5. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So will this TV series be aired uh, via Xbox Live? It's going to be aired, yeah. You're going to be able to watch it on your Xbox. Uh, it was not affected at all with, you know, we, should, we, we wrote the news story about the big Xbox originals being right. uh, sort of like everyone being let go. This is not affected by that at all. Uh, they showed a short teaser, and honestly, the thing that impressed me the most was just how good it looked. Like, a lot of times in these sort of, uh, you know, Halo's had TV series in the past. They had Ford and the Dawn. They yeah. had the, the anime uh, Legends. Yeah. But uh, this series, the production values, you could tell it was Ridley Scott behind it because the interior ship shots looked like aliens. And the exterior. Alien. Al no, <laughs> al well, I guess that's true. It was Cameron Multiple was aliens. aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the exterior, which is filmed in Iceland and Northern Ireland, looked like Prometheus. Oh. Uh, which was cool, and so one of the big things, you know, there were there were the footage they showed. Uh, it was just a real teaser; they didn't show any of the action. But they were exploring this sort of, you know, cave, this desolate landscape, and they said, "So the show actually takes place on a part of the broken Halo ring that you destroy at the end of the first Halo game." Wow! So the Halo ring blows up; it's flowing through space, and then uh, these guys are there trying to find out, you know, some mystery behind it. Do we know anything about the format? Are these hour-long episodes? Are they released weekly? Yeah, they haven't. Uh, they haven't really gone into detail. Uh, it's. It's. They sounded like they said you're going to be able to watch it all in November. So I don't know. Maybe it's going to be you know Netflix style. They're all going to be released right wow. away, which would be cool. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. But the other big thing they wanted to emphasize was that you know where Forward Unto Dawn was sort of the. Uh, it was tangentially. It had. It had relations to Halo Four, and uh, it was set far in the past. This is very much set in the present of the Halo series, and that it ties you know incredibly. You know, thick with Halo Five itself, and so you know they, they Frank O'Connor from Three Four Three described it as uh, this is Locke's superhero origin story, and so it's how he's going from a soldier to you know a Spartan in mm, Halo Five. Mm. So what were, what were your impressions of the panel? I thought it was great. Uh, you know, the cast the cast was really charismatic. They were having a lot of fun. Uh, they sort of really Scott had a message at the beginning and poked fun, saying, "So I've never been involved with a video game project before, despite the fact that." Video games have been copying my movies for the <laughs> last That's 30 pretty good. years, That's pretty good. which is absolutely true. Which He's is right. funny too, because even Halo itself is, you know, all science fiction games owe a debt to Alien. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the new Alien Isolation. Has, and Alien yep. Isolation, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, I thought, you know, from what I saw from the panel, like, you know, the cast seemed really to be in the right mindset. This, this, we're always looking for that sort of fabled V. The video game, movie, or TV show that's going to be the one. That's going to yeah. be the one that goes, you know, transcends it, and yeah. finally it's like wipes away Super Mario Brothers. And so yeah, but so maybe that's it. Like maybe we have to stop hoping for the great video game movie and just move the TV shows. Maybe that's a better format yeah. for it. Honestly, that's and, and, and I mean, we already know the best drama today is happening on TV. Yeah, right? yeah. exactly, hundred yeah. percent. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was really, I walked out of the panel just, just really sold on uh, what they were doing. You know, they even uh, by the end of it, they had kids come up and ask some questions uh, about, you know, a kid, you know, this really eloquent like seven-year-old got up and was like, "So is Agent Locke a friend or an enemy to Master Chief?" And they wouldn't say. Ooh. And so this is one of those like, obviously in Halo Two, you played as Chief and the Arbiter, uh, and so they had like a contentious relationship. Yep. So you don't know what it's going to be like in this one. We do have a question from one of our viewers on Facebook here. Let's bring that up. Tim Connors asked exactly how connected will the show be with Halo 5 Guardians? I mean, it sounds like it's legitimately a prequel, like very connected. I mean, if, if Agent Locke is just as much of a main character as Master Chief, this is his story. Sure. This is his origin story. So in the same way that you learned about Master Chief, you know, through the books and through the games, like this is how they're bringing Locke to the forefront. And Brian, you were there interviewing people as they left the panel. Yeah, I got. I talked to a good mix of people, some of them who were diehard Halo fans and some people who just, I guess, maybe they just like Ridley Scott. Because you kind of wonder like how you stumble into these yeah, things, yeah. and they're uh, all of them were coming out going, "This looks awesome." Mm -hmm. So as Halo fans, people were saying like, "This kind of fills the void that I needed um, that some of the books leave." Um, and for people who just want to see good TV or good 
content with their eyes that they don't have to play. Mm -hmm. They're happy about it. And for me, honestly, like for years, people have been telling me, get into the Halo lore, read the books and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm always like, it's, I, that's a, it's a commitment, you know? Like, sure. I love books, they're great, but to sit down and actually read giant, lengthy books cover to cover to get all the backstory, it's kind of tough. But if I can sit down on the same couch where I'm watching or playing Halo already, uh, to just consume all that and get the backstory, it's really smart. Yeah. So yeah, people were excited. They gave away an Xbox One. Someone was like, incredibly excited about that. Uh, she didn't know anything about Halo, but she's like, I got an <laughs> Xbox One. I just so. doubled in here. I don't even know, I know what count exactly. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you get, if you buy uh, the Master Chief Collection, yes. you just get... You're going to get it. Yeah, they haven't gone into, like, again, they're being sort of cagey, but, it, you know, the panel really made it sound like, hey, if you, you know, spend your $60 on the Master Chief Collection, you get the four Halo games as well as this, which is, you know, cool. You're also going to get access to the Halo 5 beta, so they want this thing to be, you know, between uh, between the, the Nightfall and the Halo 5 beta, this is your, like... Yep, this is the gap between. Obviously, we have to wait till next year, you know, hopefully for Halo Five. Yeah, and this is the gap. I think yeah. both of the things should be. Uh, they should move some copies off shelves. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, yeah, like Ridley Scott is one of those guys. You know, he's been making just incredible movies the past thirty years. So, uh, you know, having his name behind it, and uh, you know, the director of the actual series has uh, done work in like Heroes before and different shows like that. They said a lot of the crew, since they were filming in Iceland and Northern Ireland, a lot of the like actual like crew on set were from Game of Thrones. So oh, cool. yeah, they're really and and yeah again I have to emphasize just how the production values look great and you know they emphasize yeah there's a lot of mystery here there's gonna be a lot of action but we don't want to show that yet. They they also said they were working in June, which was apparently the coldest June ever in Iceland. Yep, yeah, yeah. So they said the the Halo ring that they were supposed to be on it was like a hundred degrees like in the lore it's a hundred degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> and they said like it was like zero. <laughs> in Iceland, and so they're like, ah, just pretend you're really warm for a minute, and then go back under a blanket. That's when that's when the terrified. acting kicks in. That's a, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I feel like in general, Microsoft they're betting really, really hard on Halo right now, which is great if you're a Halo fan or you're kind of on the fence, which is somebody kind of like me. If you're not too big on it, like I mean, either they grab your attention or this giant Halo-shaped boat is gonna just you know sail right past yeah. you. Sure. I mean, they're, they're hedging their bet in the right place, though, because, yeah. I mean, Game of Thrones has proved that you don't have to be the kind of person who attends Comic-Con to dig that show. Yeah, totally. And so sure. if this Halo, you know, if this thing can stand alone and attract an audience that is like, oh, well, I don't really play games, but this looks really cool. What's yeah. that all about? Then, you know, that's Halo. That's Halo and video games finding an entirely new audience. Yeah. I have to ha imagine most anyone that would be interested in watching the show would buy the Master Chief yep. Collection, but I wonder how they'll handle it, like, if you don't. Is there any way to watch it? Yeah, I mean that's gonna be that's gonna be huge. Are you gonna be able to you know stream it online? Are yeah. you gonna be able to buy it? Are they gonna release it like on a Blu-ray? Um, that's a lot of yeah, a lot of questions. This is sort of uh, uncharted waters really for uh, you know a lot of game series. So I mean there's a lot of questions. You know we're still gonna know. And they also said uh, one, a really cool thing is that their uh, Nightfall is interactive somehow. And they mm -hmm. said they're gonna talk more about that in games at Gamescom in August. So I don't know what interactive means. I don't know if it's gonna be like no I'll go that way and then the actor just goes that way. Yeah. I can shout using my Kinect. Yeah, I don't know. Microsoft has some interesting ideas that they're trying to work with, like yeah. Quantum Break. Yeah. It's also supposed to be a TV absolutely, show. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's, yeah, that's another thing we're going to find out about uh, at Gamescom. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see sort of video games grow up in these weird new ways I think we never would have guessed. Mm -hmm. When we were kids, we were playing games with, like, digitized characters and stuff like that. FMV Photo games. MMVs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill just chilling and winking. Yeah, so we kind of saw Sewer Shark and yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, Night Trap? Yeah, yeah Night right? Trap. Yeah. Way yeah. ahead of their time. <laughs> yeah, we saw shades of that, right? They were sort of like TV show scenes hidden in games. Yeah. And now games are becoming TV shows and back around, so it's really yeah. cool to yeah. see. And uh, yeah, so uh, later tonight we're going to be at Microsoft, and we're going to, you know, I'm going to be able to interview a couple of the actors. So hopefully we get some more, uh, some more info about the series. Awesome, after that. cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. sounds Pleasure. awesome.